Hi guys, I believe you are learning about the Aztec sunstone and I have a picture of it here from the late 15th century. I was interested to read online that they didn't know if it was a sundial and if it related to Aztec rituals but was intrigued by the fact that it depicts two types of calendar systems that are interlinked. In the centre, I've discovered this character is called Tonatui, and associated with the Aztec culture was sacrifice, and in each of these little hands on either side is a heart. I did some more research where I discovered, it's quite interesting document, where on the poles on north, south, east and west, there are various patterns and symbols associated with the culture. So, for example, there's a rabbit to the south and other things in the south, a lizard, um, things associated with water in the east, and um, there was things associated with rain. So I've got some information that might help me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my reference picture and some paper, and I have quite a chunky pen, which will make more sense later. I'm going to draw a circle by drawing round something. In this case, it was an old tape. Now, in a traditional sun graphic, if I just draw something like a small child would do, you see these radiating lines coming out of a sun or a circle. So what you might want to do, you can see it in this design here, you might want to create a smaller circle within the larger one. You could obviously use a compass to create an accurate center point. And I might just pop in these poles, north, south, east and west. You can see these occurring in this design. Slightly different there, but we're going to explore that. So I could consider north, south, east and west. I'm only focusing on what's in the circle. They're just there to help me if I did want to make reference to some of the research I have. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a face. Now, if we think about the proportions of a human face, we have two eyes, a central nose, and some sort of mouth. I've drawn that in the most basic way possible. And you might look at some of this design work or come up with your own ideas. So I'm gonna think my eyes will probably be there, the base of the nose is someone here, and the mouth is there. Now, you might want to put the tongue into the mouth to represent Tonatui. You might want to kind of turn the nose into something more graphic and simple. You might want to build the eyes up a little bit. So I've gone for quite a human eye but quite stylized nose in terms of a triangle. That could be many different shapes that are associated with a nose. If you think about the construction of nose, that looks a bit more like a pyramid. So you could try different things. You can see how this one's been drawn here, like the base of a cloud in a cartoon cloud with a center line. So you could have a little play with that. You could try some nostrils and two lines. Lots of things you can try. Now. Around the outer border, if you decide to have one, you might refer to the research and come up with ideas based upon the research. So you might come up with simple things like grass in the south. So I might draw a symbol that's like lines that might represent the grass. I might look for other things in the south. There's a vulture. I might be symbolic about my vulture. I might go for some bird footprints as opposed to draw a full vulture because it's going to be relatively small what you do so we might want to incorporate symbols so rain in the west might put a cloud into it and draw some rain so around the outer rim i might start putting lots of different things right so rather unusually i've jumped to the end now this is the final print let's look at what i made and the poly print so you can see the print plate now here see a serpent at one side appears at the other. Look at my hands, how I put one upon the other. When one turns over, it appears in reverse. So you need to think when you're making your design, I'm showing you the end point now, at this stage, you'd have to draw things backwards if you needed them to reveal the other way around. For example, if you wanted to write a word, so you wanted to put the north, south, east and west on the pole, you'd have to write it backwards on the poly plate. My recommendation is you do not want to try words in your first polyprint design or numbers. You just focus on patterns and graphic symbols. Good luck, boys. We'll go back to looking at our, our design work and coming up with ideas. So you've seen the final design and notice I've popped a skull at the top representing death, dogs, footprints and the flint. Um, there's the rain and then our little house, the vulture bird footprints, grass, a flower, 
water and the serpent we've already seen it's imprinted in reverse you can see the full design now we're going to be using a material called polyprint and it comes in a4 sheets there is one of the a4 sheets and i've got a section here an off cut i'm just going to show you it tears very easily watch what happens if i bend it it snaps so we do not want to bend this material now you're going to be given hopefully a pre-cut circle and what we want to do is we want to indent the surface. Now, imagine we look at it on this profile. So we're looking at the flat edge. You can see, I'll put my fingers to the edge of it. Can you see it's about two to three millimeters thick? And if I draw on the piece of paper, what happens? When we draw a line on it, we press into the top of it with our pen, we create a groove. And those grooves are very important for what we're going to do. We're going to try a little print project. So what I'm going to do is have my design in front of me. And remember, it's quite simple. Using this thick pen was useful because I cannot have very small detail. You'll begin to see that in a few minutes when I start to draw. So I'm drawing lightly with a biro. The harder the point, the better for this particular job. But at the moment, I'm just drawing very lightly. So I'm drawing a line to represent this circle. Notice where I'm drawing it. I'm drawing it at an equal distance, so it's running parallel with the outer circle. That is very tricky to do. So you're going to have to be very careful. Just keep looking at that distance. And once you've drawn that line, what you now want to do, I've drawn it just lightly on the surface, I want to now press with the point of the pen into the surface. So if you can see, it's going into the surface. I don't want it to come through the other side and I'm drawing in little sections because I'm pressing it down. So I'm creating a groove. So very carefully I'm, paint, I'm creating this little V shape. So guys, I've now got a groove all the way around and now I can start putting my design in. I only get one chance at this, so I want to be quite careful. Remember, I can lightly draw onto the surface and it doesn't matter if you change your design. If that's what you want to do or something doesn't quite work the way you want it, you can freestyle. Now, see what I'm going to do? I'm going to measure roughly so I'm getting my eye in a similar position. 
If it's not quite symmetrical, I don't think that matters too much. So remember, once I've done it, I'm going to then draw over it, pressing harder to create the groove. Remember, the groove is what we're looking for. So I'm going to do a line up the side of the nose, pressing a bit harder. You can hear it just crushing as I'm pressing in. I've decided I'm going to put some dots up the centre of the nose. Dots are nice to do, they're very easy to do. I'm going to put a dot into the eye. So I'm going to draw the top of the eye, the bottom of the eye. Now, if your lines are too close together, let me explain this here. If you put another groove very close together, you don't have that top ridge. So what happens is you end up with a groove that ends up a bit like that. So it makes the line wider. Remember, we want these narrow grooves. But until you've done it, you won't quite know if it's going to work. So we'll just give this a go. So I'm going to put a line for the mouth. It's not a very smiley chap mine. So I'm going to put top lip in. A bit like a sand dune. And I'm going to put the tongue in. I'm going to put the dots down that as well. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all this detail in around the outer rim. I might have to make it all a bit bigger. So I've drawn my triangle a bit bigger. Got my strange skull like symbol. I think some of this is going to be a bit small, so I'm going to put its little eyes just as a dot, the nose as a dot, and the mouth just as a line. Now, this is about the wind. I'm trying to make like a spirally shape to go on the wind. And here I'm having my serpent. Now I might struggle a bit to do this really accurately, so I'm just taking my time and I will continue to draw these things all the way around my design. So I've drawn the design everywhere around the border. If you end up with any spaces or want to add anything into it, you can still keep working in with pattern. See how I'm going around the little radial lines? These are about maybe a centimetre apart. And I'm going to be consistent. I'm just going to go for this all the way around. Turn it around. Notice I turn things around to make it easy for me when I'm drawing. You do that in all sorts of art. So there we go, that'll do. And if you've got any spaces where you think it's a bit dull, you could add some little dots. Remember, little dots are very, very easy to do. They always look quite good. If you didn't want to use symbols in the background, and you just want to use dots and marks, that's absolutely fine. You could do pattern. You don't have to use the secret symbols. But I quite like the idea of a secret symbol and a code. So I've got lots of pattern into there. Now we're ready to print.